Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Sam Sportio here today for my sort of comeback video. And um, I'm sorry to, to be gone for so long. I've had a cold and I wasn't able to record anything that had a good audio. Actually, in my, in my latest videos, you could probably, could probably hear me sneeze a lot. And that just got worse and worse. And now I'm good, I'm better now. You should probably see me sort of doing <laughs> a couple of times in the video, but it's nothing... It's nothing dangerous at this point to the audio, so I'm I'm back here. I'm back to recording, and um, the species we're going to do today will be a sort of relaxed, easy to keep one to just start things off again slowly, steadily, and easily. And that species is Campanotus nicobarensis. And as always, here's Jeff, my my Latin buddy. Campanotus nicobarensis. There you go. Thank you, Jeff. Now, um, Campanatus nicobarensis is a, um, a tropical species of ant. They exist in the southern regions of China and, and on the eastern Asian isles, like the Philippines and in places north from that. They, um, I say they're very relaxed because they're easy to keep and fun to watch. So let's start on the how to care for them, and you'll know why I chose these words to describe them. First of all, they are what I describe as a generalistic approach ant. What this means is that they are very resourceful, they are very omnivorous, and very resourceful. They eat almost everything and there no fuss at all to keep except that you have to keep the an eye on humidity because they, they really thrive on high humidity now being this generalistic ant they nest everywhere and are very nomad nomad nomadic yeah they move a lot and they move to hollow woods to hollow hollowed out rotten woods to whatever little crack and hole they can fit their colony into and knowing that you can actually understand why this Campanotus species doesn't grow to the huge numbers that temperate Campanotus or other Campanotus actually grow to these guys instead of the 10,000 plus workers these guys only get to be a few thousand strong and that's that's giving it a bit of a stretch. Now, one thing you should keep in mind is that the queen does not have the periodic egg laying break that normal, when I say normal, I mean temperate Campanotas actually have. So the queen lays 24 seven, seven days a week, something, something <laughs> weeks a year. Also they don't hibernate. So that stays true to all year long. One thing to to that I should actually be surprised about is how long the queens live. They are noticeably long living. They can live to be above twenty five years old, and that's that's a long life for an insect, right? So, one thing you should know about the queen is that she live long and she lay a lot of eggs. So you should keep her fat and healthy. All right. Now, when it comes to temperature and humidity, they are tropical. Keep that in mind. Give them a gradient and I'll throw some numbers at your face. The, the nest should always be at, um, at something higher than 60% humidity. I find that to be the optimal condition. And the whole setup should never be below 20 nor above the high 30s, I wouldn't go above 35. And I personally would not keep the the setup at anywhere below 23 or 22 degrees and nowhere above 29 or 30 Celsius. It's all Celsius, you do the conversion if you want. Um, they can withstand those first temperatures but do not keep them at those for a very long period of time, all right? They are very hardy when it comes to these temperature 
specifics, but keep in mind that the queen must be must be fat and healthy to keep a steadily brood growth and egg laying. Now, brood growth, I actually just remembered, is a very, very important topic with these guys, topic with these guys, because it's it's very, very fast. It takes um, below a month for the egg to turn into a fully fully fledged adult worker. I'd say it takes about 28, 29, maybe 27 days for an egg to to go through the whole process of becoming an adult worker. So, when it comes to setup, what setup do you need to keep your queen fat and healthy? I would say that the fact that they actually like to 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 nest in hollowed out rotten wood should be completely ignored. I'm not saying you cannot have success with it. You should and could try having success with it. Just not with these guys because they need the high humidity and the high temperature. So first of all, if you want to do wood, you do it in a naturalistic setup. Never do wood in a sort of clean, aesthetic and... Um, a very sober type of type of setup because that'll just go bad with fungus and mold. And um, rotten wood is very prone to this, and in naturalistic setups with a lot of humidity and a lot of, you know, a lot of moisture, a lot of heat, um, the wood will go bad very quickly, and the ants might not even live in there, and it will be a pain to move around and to to take care of stuff. So. If you want to try to have a Campanata species living in wood, do that with a temperate species and keep them at a sort of a lower temperature. Now, when it comes to setup, as I've said, they're generally they're very generalistic. They have a very generalistic approach to life. So whatever hole they can fit into, it'll be a nest. What I suggest is you go with the normal route of a nest connected to an outworld. And one thing I would actually incorporate to make these guys really happy and thriving is cork. Cork can be added to the nest parts in many ways. The best way is to have the, the nest part be made out of cork. Now just remember, it should be cork inside of something because they can chew through cork. The fun thing about cork is that you can mold it. It's very easy for you to mold it, to crack, to carve on it. And it's very easy for the ants to do so as well. So you'll, you'll be able to start out some chambers and leave room for them to make their own. Also, since cork has um, a woody texture to it, they'll feel right at home since they like to live in wood. Also, and also, 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 uh, cork can, can soak up a lot of humidity, but not as much as these ants would like so i'd always keep a sponge chamber or you know something else something other some other meaning some other means of hum humidifying the nests up a bit another thing you should keep in mind is these guys is um they do not really like to um, to fill contain, I find that they they sh you should always give them a little bit more space than you think they need, right? They are very good climbers, so this will help because if they're actively trying to escape, you'll have a bad time. Now, if they aren't actively trying to escape, it'll be much easier for them to be contained. Now, let's quickly go through nutrition. Nutrition. They are generalistic, they will eat everything, they love sweets, and they love everything that's uh, watery. If they can drink it, if they can drink it, they love it. Everything from sugar, honey solutions, to actual raw honey, um, actually protein shakes and all that stuff, they love that. And uh, always supplement diet with some freshly cut insects and stuff like that, that they'll love to, to eat. They also love to eat fruits and uh, and sort of those those little what uh, it's berries. They love to eat fruits and berries, they'll take that as well. 
Now, this is it. I hope you can all go ahead and be great in Campanaris nicobrinensis and keepers. This species is very fun to watch because of how much more active they are compared to most temperate species, especially temperate Campanaris. They are not as quick to dart around as normal normal temperate Campanaris. But they're very active, especially at night, they're nocturnal. And uh, one thing you should keep in mind is that they're big, so they're very fun to watch because you can watch it. You can watch them perfectly with the naked eye. They're, I'd say they have, well, they have majors and minors and they go to uh, from like five millimeters to like 12, 13 millimeters. Then those majors have a really big head. They can chew through all that cork that you've placed in the nest. They are awesome and uh, I really find them to be a pretty ant species, so go ahead and be the greatest ant keeper you can possibly be. Remember, remember that patience is key and with these guys you don't have to have all that much patience because of how how fast they are for a camera species to grow. Now I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm a, I'm a little bit rusty on my on my English pronunciation and my video video talking skills basically so i hope you've liked it share this around and happy end keeping see you in the next one bye bye